volume, the nourishment you put in your um, cultivation, it's, it, it's different. And also that it is used a lot for like making experiments and seeing how the, for example, the plant is going to, to grow. And if you wanna make it, for example, resistant to some, something external, that's a good way to uh, prove it in smaller um, experiments rather than in be really big plants or so. Okay. Thank you. In genetic modification, right? Improvement of the crops, improvement of the varieties. Okay. Thank you, Maria Jose. Who's next? Uh, me, teacher. Uh, yes. I also found that in 19... 07 uh rose granville harrison it's it's name as the father of the tissue culture because he was able to culture a nerve cell from a frog in a solidified limb or something like that so he's considered as a fa father of animal cell culture right and yes. uh, and there will be another father or mother uh, maybe in the in, in in plant tissue culture right yes okay good thank you pilar who's next can i go yep well, i was i also saw that uh later on uh, after in harrison alexis carroll and burroughs improved the techniques uh, used by harrison and they use biological fluids which was important for the development of the technology Mm -hmm. Yes, very well, thank you. Who's next? Anything about application? Can tell yeah, you. I found one application. Yes. Uh, yes. It's an important technology for developing countries to produce disease-free, high-quality quantity material and to produce rapid production of many, many uniform plants. Yes, clonal propagation, micropropagation. Thank you, Carlos. Who's next? No comment. Yes, Estefania, please. Um, I read that for bioremediation, they took uh, toxic compounds in vitro and they tried to remove them with uh, tools. <laughs> so I found that interesting. Okay, thank you very much. So, so okay, you have reviewed some information, investigated very well. Uh, in today's session, we are going to talk about three important aspects. The number one is introduction, what is tissue culture all about? And then history, obviously, we, we cannot uh, learn anything without knowing its history, right? Because tissue culture is, is a full uh, uh, science and uh, it has a lot of multiple uh, uh, areas that all together make tissue culture as such a very wide area. And uh, it's very important to know how the, the research have been evolutionized, how the research has been advanced. So now what is what is happening today and what was happening in, in the beginning of the, the tissue cultures, right? Uh, and application, obviously, applications, you know, that tissue culture uh, in, in, in in part of the basically in plant because uh, uh, today's session uh, I will give you a very brief comparison between the plant and animal, but uh, the the full focus about the 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 introduction history and application is is about plant. Okay, so we are talking about plant tissue culture. Okay, so so plant tissue culture basically it's it's a it's a mixture of techniques by which. Uh, you can cultivate plants in vitro. In vitro means flask, okay? Within the tube or test tube, you can create plants within flask inside the laboratory in artificial condition where you do not require water, you don't require soil, sunlight, uh, uh, those all traditional or traditional parameters that are essential to, 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 for, a, for a plant to survive or for a seed to germinate, right? That is the traditional way to create plant, right? We have nurseries, we have uh, different kinds of traditional method by which you can germinate and you can cultivate plants. But 
in vitro or plant tissue culture when we call it we are talking about everything that has been uh, done inside the laboratory under artificial conditions under artificial parameters okay so what is the main idea behind tissue culture the main idea is that i am going to select a part of the plant not necessarily it, it is going to be a seed right because generally when you want to cultivate a plant when you are want to propagate a plant you are going to require a seed that is going to germinate and convert in a plant in this particular case in tissue culture seed is not required because plant cells have a special um, capacity what we call a totipotentiality or totipotent cell and that cell plant cell uh, plant uh, have many kind many many uh, part of the plants contain different kind uh, different kind of cells and many of them they have totipotential capacity okay so this particular cell when converted in a full grown plant that is called totipotentiality so plants once they have this capacity we use it for our favor right to do research to to do innovations, to cultivate plants, to do genetic improvement, whatever you want to do, we use this capacity. Uh, in general terms, totipotentiality is the only characteristic from plant kingdom because in animals, you can find several animals, right? Where you have uh, a similar kind of process, biological benefit, uh, where you have example of um, starfish, for example, if you cut an arm uh, of a starfish, it can regenerate its arm, right? Uh, if you have a lizard, lagartija, uh, if you cut the tail of lagartija, it regenerates, right? So there are certain kinds of uh, certain species of animals which has similar, not similar, but uh, partially similar uh, capacity, but this is not totipotentiality, okay? This could be considered as a unipotentiality where you can only regenerate an organ, right? I cannot take one cell of mine or a lagartija or a turtle or a, any kind of animal and I put in a, in a tissue culture lab or in, 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 a, in a artificial conditions and I expect a complete new organism right complete organism i cannot expect that so that is the difference that 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 is very important to determine whether what is total potentiality so that is the only uh, uh, um, uh, uh, benefit of the plant species or plant kingdom over many other species okay so the overall process is select a plant part which is the suitable part and then from that particular plant, you are going to grow plants which are clones, which are considered as clone, right? Uh, uh, when we call it clone, it could be clone when it is 100% similar in all aspects, right? In all the genes, in the all the genetic compositions, it is 100% identical, means it's a clone. But during the process, there are minor changes because the cells is going to be stressed, cell is going to survive, right? It is going to phase, and it's very difficult to identify a particular mutation during the process. So basically, uh, generally they are considered as a clone. And uh, obviously the, the whole soul genetic composition is going to be uh, very, very similar. So that is why the mother plant or, or, or the, the, the main explant that you have chosen your plant slates or your future plant generation, they are going to be identical in, in, in at, at genetic labels. When they are identical at genetic label, means by phenotypic level or phenotypic characteristics are going to be same. So that is the technology and that is the idea behind this whole thing. Why we do micropropagation, it has a lot of benefits. Plants grow faster, plants grow healthier, and plants can be manipulated under in these artificial circumstances, right? Uh, so before understanding this concept, it's very important to, to visualize the differences between plant cell and animal cell, right? Plant cell are, are, are the cells that can produce its own food. So they have, they have this superior uh, uh, characteristics. They can produce their, sh uh, their, their sugar means if they produce their sugars means they are producing their energy. And by this energy, they can run the metabolism and the plant can start absorbing the nutrient from the soil, absorbing water and other kinds of minerals which are required for its growth and development. So plants have 
this 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 superior superior characteristics but also plants are the organism which have three different genomes it has chlor chloroplast right it has nucleus and it has mitochondria so plant have three different genomes uh, on the contrary in animal cells we have only two kinds of genome chloroplast and mitochondria both genomes or three genomes of the plants are important because chloroplast genome has the genes which helps plants to perform photosynthesis okay so so uh, all of these genomes have their own importance right uh, in in animals or in humans for example the mitochondrial dna most of the dna is called junk dna it does not have any known function but we use it uh, for for the evil for the evolutionary study purposes for the population genetic studies and uh, of course nowadays we also uh, understand that there are some genes that may be responsible for some kind of gene expression in animals or humans okay so basic difference between these uh, two cell system it's it's very important and you can imagine that one when one cell can produce its own food that cell definitely it's little easier to handle in artificial conditions, right? Isn't it so? Because when, when it, it, it is capable, only one single cell, when it has some chloroplast molecule, green molecules, um, and they can capture the light, can produce the sugar. So at least the maintenance between these two uh, species, uh, this plant species is a little superior because handling and maintenance are little easier i want to say that it is like just you put this plant cell and plant is going to come out right that is not going to happen it has all the science the technique the protocol the procedure all that right so so anyways uh, a, if you want to compare between plant tissue culture and animal cell culture which definitely we will discuss further in in when we will start the animal cell culture part but in 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 a small picture, you can at least differentiate the the what is the the main differences between plant tissue culture and animal tissue culture, right? So, for example, in in vitro uh, cultivation of organs, tissue cells at defined temperature using cubator and supplemented with a medium uh, that is uh, going to happen in in animal cell culture uh, because in animal cell culture we do not create humans or animals, right? In plants, we do. So in this part, in animal cell culture, what, what you can cultivate, just uh, the tissues, tissues parts, not even organ. We don't have a capacity to create organs yet, right? We cannot just put one cell of the heart and we have complete heart. Okay, no, that is not possible yet. Research is going on, okay? Uh, animal cells can only undergo a specialized function of the organ from which they have taken the cell. This is what I just mentioned. You take one uh, skin cell, for example, I can take my skin part from, uh, from my body. I can put into the uh, tissue culture conditions. And what I can do, I can uh, perform uh, experiments and I can help the cells to grow, to multiply, to expand and to maintain a life, right? But this is not going to be convert in, in Ashutosh, right? Or in any person, it is not going to give you other organs except the skin, okay? Only the fibroblast. So that is the difference. If I cultivate a plant cell, you can expect a full, complete grown plant, okay? So isn't it wonderful that you have two different systems, one where you can only grow only the part of the tissue which you have chosen to grow, and in other things that you can grow organs, and then you can have a complete um, organism, right? Which have these multiple organs, right? Uh, in this case, for example, in animal cells, it requires a wide range of nutrients because in animal cell culture, you do cultures for insect, you do culture for um, snake, crocodile, like cold-blooded animals. You can do tissue culture for humans, hot-blooded animals, right? So there are very big variety of uh, species. And also, uh, every uh, organ, for example, uh, requires different kinds of conditions or media. So uh, in animal cell culture, I'm just giving you one hint. You can find dozens, dozens, or maybe, if I'm not exaggerating, maybe uh, more than 100 different kinds of culture media that can be used in animal cell culture. For cancer cell, 
another tissue culture media for eye cell, another tissue culture media for heart cell, brain cell, neuronal cell, uh, hepatic cell, blood cells, leukocyte, lymphocyte, everything can be cultured, but requires different kinds of media, okay? Components and nutrients. Um, whereas in plant, and that is the most wonderful thing in plant that every plant may be unique, every plant species is unique, every individual is unique, but at least their requirements does not change much. Uh, they all need uh, sugars, they all need proteins, they all need carbohydrates, right? But they also all need uh, the same uh, concentration or not, not exactly same concentration, but same uh, types of micro and macronutrients, okay? So, so, the, the, so that the complexity between these two culture system is very, 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 very uh, important. Uh, a animal cell culture, for example, they cannot grow uh, independently for a longer period of time. I take my cell uh, from maybe from my skin, I put in the media, and I can expect that maybe after a few weeks or maybe after a few months, they, they are going to die because animal cells, you know, uh, they have the, the natural phenomena. We call it biological senescence or apoptosis because cell has to die, right? So, so and since we don't have any totipotentiality, what happens? Our cells can grow, multiply, and will die. Okay, certainly it will die. In plants, the cells can be mortal because it is, a, it is basically, uh, it can do photosynthesis. So basically it is a complete organism in some sense. It is an entity that can produce its food. It has its own metabolism. It can keep growing, doubling, multiply, but can differentiate in a particular organ and eventually it will convert in a complete plant, okay? So that is the difference between two systems. Uh, in animal cell culture, you have two types of the, the cell culture system. Number one, we call it uh, uh, adherent cultures, or you can call it in Spanish, or uh, that is my terms, just to uh, remind the difference, the, the cellulas pegajosas, right? And non-pegajosas, okay? Uh, pegajosas means sticky, and suspension means non-sticky. So basically, we have two main types of culture. Uh, there are cells that are going to stick on the surface of the flask, and there are cells that can be grown without attaching on any kind of surface. Um, in plant tissue culture, you have a big variety of these different kinds of cultures. So I'm just can give you a few names and we will learn all of them. Okay, for example, callus culture, you have protoplast culture, you have embryogenesis for embryo culture, you have um, uh, uh, the, the organogenesis to develop organs, right? So there are so many different techniques in plant tissue culture. Lastly, uh, the, the secondary metabolite production that many, most of you already know that uh, whether it is animal or plant, we all produce uh, valuable compounds that can be used for as a medicine, as a food, as a molecules for, for, for benefits, right? Industrial purposes, enzymes, proteins, right? So uh, for example, nowadays vaccine is being produced in, in vectors, right? The, the, it is the greatest example nowadays, COVID-19 vaccine is cultivated in the eggs or it is cultivated in the human cells cultivate the COVID-19 virus, right? So that it can reproduce, then they can capture the spikes or extract the spikes of the COVID-19 and can create or construct the vaccines, right? So tissue culture system is the most important system to study diseases and to develop drugs or test drugs. So whatever you are seeing nowadays in with COVID vaccines, thanks to animal biotechnology, and what this is what we are going to see is totally related with the vaccine production, studying of viruses, because everything is uh, false in the applications of animal cell culture. And finally, uh, the, 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 the plants, for example, they have so many applications that what we are going to discuss today. And uh, the final objective, uh, it is to create plants, whether it is for research or whether it is for food or whether it is for any other kind of application, okay? So do we have 
Any doubt till here? No? Yes, I yes. didn't listen. What was the difference between the adherent cultures and the suspension? Like, which was, yeah, yeah. Adher adherent is sticky, pegajosas, and suspension is non sticky. Means one cell culture system means any one type of cells in, in animal body are going to stick on the surface, and another one can grow without adhering or without. Uh, 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 adhering on any kind of surfaces. Oh, thank you. Okay. Okay. Cool. So, so yes, Stefania, please. Uh, yes, yeah, sorry. Uh, the, you can put the other, the previous, uh, the, yes, callus culture. Why is it called callus? Is that a, a type of, of what? Callus is a mass of cells. Uh, we will learn it in deeper uh, mm -hmm. uh, 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 later on. But uh, just to, to clarify your doubt, callus means cajos in Spanish. And cajos is a mass of undifferentiated cells. Means the cell, which is like a tumor, it's like a ball of algodon, una bolita mm -hmm. de algodon. And there are millions of cells together. And these cells can be manipulated by hormones, by the conditions, so that each cell can convert in an embryo or it can be converted in a complete plant. Okay? okay, so that is why it is called callus culture. Thank you. Okay. Okay, so here just it's important to find out the basic differences between the organelles that uh, exist in these two cell systems in animal cell culture and plant cell culture a plant cell they have these things in common but they have these differences so this is also very important you to keep in mind that what are the things that are chloroplast they are unique for the plant cell plastids they are unique for the plant cell cell wall that is unique to plant cell and rectangular shape basically shape shape is different animal cell is it 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 it, it, it is more like cir circle more rounded and plant cell is more, more quadradito, okay? Now I'm going to remove my video here because I cannot annotate nothing if I have this video running over there, okay? So I'm going to remove it. How I'm going to remove it? Okay, okay, let, let me see. Okay, now I'm going a little deeper and now things may be a little complicated okay so uh, you can keep asking okay so these three things are very important and totally interrelated differentiation differentiation means a cell when it differentiate in something right differentiate means when i say differentiated cell or non-differentiated cell differentiated cell means a cell which have a particular defined specialized function, okay? When I say undifferentiated cell means I'm talking about a cell which is still does not have any defined function. So that is why callus, for example, is called um, undifferentiated mass of cells because you can differentiate them, you can manipulate their function, so they must have some function, okay? So differentiation is a process how the cells become something else, okay? Very simple example. In the normal animal reproduction, what happens? You have a sperm, you have ova, right? They got fertilized, and what happens after that? They got fertilized, and this one single cell become a complete baby or one animal, right? So how this one single cell converted and differentiated in such a way that one single cell become multi as a, a cluster of multi cells then multiple cells become organs and then organs become a complete functional animal or human right so this is called differentiation so now here you can see totipotent when i say totipotent you remember that this cell the first cell which is fertilized, right? With uva and the sperm, right? This is the fertilized cell. We can call it totipotent because this cell is going to give the birth to a baby. Isn't it so? So this is 
this is this is but to create humans right uh, the only cell that has the capacity as a or you can consider as pluripotent cell is the cell which is fertilized right so that is why it is not possible in human you cannot just fertilize cell and create humans right that is even unethical even you can go to the jail right doing these kind of experiments but but naturally we have a cell which has totipotent now this totipotent cell become pluripotent cell right because you know that this is a one single cell structure then it multiply divide it become four cell eight cell 34 cell blastocyte like this okay so the pluripotent cell is the cell that become multipotent okay multipotent means a cell which can give different kind of products or different kinds of cells a cell which has capacity to convert in multiple cells and that is called multipotent cell and it is different from totipotent because totipotent cell is going to give rise to a complete organism okay it has the capacity so try to differentiate try to understand the difference between this and very important what i'm talking right now it is about animals not about plant just to give you an idea that how you can uh, 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 understand the the differentiation in animals and in plant system totipotentiality in animal system and in plant system okay so this is i'm talking about the animal system because in plant system I can take one single cell from leaf and can get a complete plant from it. Okay. So the cell I'm taking is totipotential cell and I will get a plant. But I cannot take a fertilized egg in humans, right? So anything what we have right now is a is a is a cell which can you consider as a unipotent cell, maybe. Okay, maybe because blood cell, for example, our blood B lymphocyte. T lymphocyte, natural cell, cell, blood cell, all these cells are constant, constantly producing in the body. Okay. So we can call most of the cell in our body. They are unipotent. I take my, 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 my skin, put in the cell and I will get only the, the fibroblast, which is my skin. So basically they are unipotent. Okay. So totipotent, full organism, pluripotent cell, which give the origin to multipotent cell. Okay. And unipotent, one cell, one organism. Oh, sorry, one cell to one cell. Basically, they will produce themselves. Okay. Doubt question till here. Okay. Now, yes, Carla. Yes, yes, I have a question. So, totipotent, they can create a full organism. Pluripotent, they can take multiple functions and okay. multipotent is that they can create different well they can produce differentiated cells right or i got confused okay it's normal don't worry totipotent cell it's clear totipotent is a plant cell right it's a plant cell which i can have a complete plant from it or a human cell which is a fertilized uva and sperm Okay, so these are the two types of totipotent cell in plant and animal. Now, a totipotent cell become a pluripotent cell, right? Pluripotent cell because now it is going to give a multipotent cell, basically. When I say pluripotent cell, means pluripotent which can give you or which can be transformed, differentiate in more than one organ. Okay, pluripotency. More than one organ or multiple organs. Okay. So that is why it is called pluripotent cell, but it is very important. Pluripotent cell in human body, it has only one function. It gives rise to multipotent cell, okay? So you will see that embryonic stem cell, it is considered as a pluripotent cell. You see on, on my picture, the pluripotent cell, it is considered as a stem cell and a stem cell is an embryonic stem cell, which become multipotent means, look, here you can see, it is going to give you a leukocyte, a thrombocytes, erythrocyte, osteogenesis, chondrogenesis, myogenesis, tendogenesis, and others. Means it is able to create different kinds of organs, right? This is how a baby is created. This is how an animal is regenerated in the body. Developmental biology, right? Different organs are going to be formed from multipotent cell, okay? 
So multipotent cell means multi organs and unipotent cell means only one kind of organ. I take my um, heart cell, put in the tissue text test tube and I will only grow heart cell, right? So that is called uh, a unipotent cell. And here you can see uh, a muscle cell will create muscles, a tendon cell will create ligaments, a cartilage cell will create cartilage, a bone cell will create bones, right? Is that clear, Carla? Yes, teacher, more clear. Okay. Yes, we have two more hands out there. Yes, Emilia. Uh, I don't have clear the unipotent cell definition. Unipotent cell means, uh, like for example, what is the composition of, 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 of our bone? The composition of our bone is a bone cell, which comprises together, mixed together, and combinedly they create bones. So basically, uh, uh, this multipotent cell, for example, will create uh, one kind of cell, and that cell will create one type of organ, right? So it's like uh, very specialized, and only one kind of organ they can be converted in, right? Fibroblast, okay. fibroblast means only skin. Chick cell means only chick, uh, heart cell only heart, spleen only spleen, lung cell only lungs, neurons only neurons, right? So if I put the neurons, only neurons can be regenerated, right? Yes, now I can. Thank you. Okay, yes. Yes, Emilio, uh, Enrique, sorry. Yes. Uh, well, so if all the cells come from a pluripotent cell, what changes do they have to go under? So we can start considering as a pluripotent cell, a multipotent cell, etc. Okay. Like what, what are the changes in this? Okay. okay, very good question. Look, everything is in the developmental biology. This, this is a whole area which is considered in developmental biology. And all the process from one single cell become multiple cells and organs and organs become a complete body. This is regulated by genes, okay? This is regulated by developmental genes. And these developmental genes are under investigation. Still, we do not know much about developmental biology. Uh, so all the process of switching on, switching, switching off of different biological process that uh, activate certain genes or this deactivate certain genes that all process is regulated by the certain genes in the human genome that are coming from the sperm and the uva, right? So these particular genes, they are totally responsible for this transformation or in some terms you can tell it metamorphosis, right? Some kind like, like transformational changes, anatomical changes, uh, all that they are the regulation is by expression of certain genes. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Any doubt question, guys? Okay. Cool. Now th this is very important. Huh? This is I want you to just keep in mind because to become a good scientist, imagination is very important, and this table is very 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 important here. For example. Totipotent cell, this is, I'm talking about plants now, right? Totipotent cell, this is a leaf you see, I take one uh, uh, leaf part, so I consider it as a totipotent cell. Now this cell differentiate, okay? One single cell, just imagine one single cell, okay? Don't imagine a plant, one single cell. This will differentiate. So after the differentiation, what are the products that I expect from this single cell? I can develop embryos directly from a single cell. This is the wonderful uh, capacity of a plant cell. So I have options. I can manipulate them by hormones, by, uh, by chemicals, which I already know, right? We are going to learn. So I can have embryos. So just imagine direct embryo. When you have embryo, what is the final product of embryo? Final product of embryo is is a complete plant, right? It's a plant lead. So I have an option to get embryo. I have option to get organogenesis. Organogenesis means create organs. What are the main organs of plants? There are three. Leaf, root, and a stem, right? And there are some other organs. They are in the flower, some other organs. They are in the fruit. But there is no flower. There is no fruit without a plant. So first I'm going to create a plant which has root, shoot, and leaf. 
So I have capacity that this particular leaf can give me leaf, but leaf will not come without stem. So basically I will go with the stem or root. So that is also another possibility by some methods, but very rare, not all plants are going to respond, but it is also possible to create xylem and phloem. That is the part of vascular system of plants that help plants to suck the nutrients and water from the soil, okay? And all the systems that run the like blood in our body, and the water and nutrients in the plant, that is called vascular system, and it is made up of primarily by xylem and phloem, okay? So just imagine from one single cell, I have all these possibilities. And just to understand more, caulogenesis means I can get shoots, rhizogenesis means I can only root, and caulorhizogenesis means shoot and root, okay? So, so this is the idea, this is the, this is the, uh, um, uh, how would you say, uh, Yes, this is the, 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 the background, background picture of all the techniques that comprises the, the whole tissue culture area. Okay, yes, Carla. Sorry, I have technical problems. Um, but all the cells in the plants are totipotent? Very good question. Thanks for asking. Not all cells are in plants totipotent. Of course, they are not. There are certain cells for example when you want to make sure that whether this particular plant has a totipotent cell to make uh, uh, sure we go with the leaf cells uh, most of the leaf cells they have mesophyll cells okay if you want to point out point it out mesophyll cell are the cells they are very well known to have totipotentiality and uh, meristematic tissue, for example, the tissue which is growing, uh, gr growing uh, upwards, you know, when plants grow like from uh, bottom to top, right, uh, just contrary to the gravi gravitational force. So this, this, this particular meristematic tissue or apical meristem, this is, this is in most of the plants, it, 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 it already there and it's growing upward. So that tissue also considered to have 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 totipotential cell okay so and you can take stem also in many plants you can uh, take roots but roots generally they are not they don't have much uh, totipotential cells okay so this is you are going to learn and every plant is unique as i already said every plant is unique but definitely whenever it comes to the choice you go with the leaf meristematic tissue and and most of the things which are green because green cells also considered to have the totipotentiality, okay? Question, doubt? Okay, moving further. Okay, so now it is, now that it would be tricky, I'm, I'm getting deeper and deeper now, okay? So for example, now, how would you classify the undifferentiated cell and differentiated cell? I already answered uh, from the second or third slide. The differentiated cell basically is differentiated. What is Ashutosh Sharma? I am a differentiated creature. Okay, I already differentiated because I am now Ashutosh. I am a human. I am Homo sapien, and I have my eye, my organs, all working. Right. So everything in me it is differentiated. If I become a cell, right? If I become a cell, then I am undifferentiated. The cell which is going to be Ashutosh, right? So that cell, which is, is still not Ashutosh, is considered as an undifferentiated cell, right? No function, no destiny, okay? Perdido, okay? Cellula perdida, without ambition, without, without destiny, okay? So, so that is called undifferentiated cell. Now, uh, anything you see in a plant, anything you see in a plant or any plant part you take as an X plant, what would you call it undifferentiated cell or differentiated cell? Can you repeat the question? In any plant part you take, any plant part, you cut it, anything you take, what it is, differentiated or undifferentiated? Differentiated. 
It is differentiated because basically anything you see, it is already differentiated because it all has its function, right? You do any, you see anything in a plant which does not have any function, right? They don't plant, do not create things or animal do not create things without function, right? So everything you see, it is differentiated, but you can make undifferentiated cell from a differentiated material, okay? And that is what you do in tissue culture, okay? You are getting my point? So if I take a, a plant part and I make callus from it, callus, you know, you put chemicals, hormones, and you get callus from it. Now callus, it is your slave, okay? It is your, it is under, it's, it's destiny in under your hands. Basically, you are the one who are going to decide the destiny. So when you create callus from an already differentiated tissue, it is called undifferentiated cell. Okay, undifferentiated mass, undifferentiated tissue, right? Are you getting my point? Okay, yes, Carla. But this only happens in, in plants, right? We are right now talking in plants, right? Because we cannot pass in humans from differentiated to undifferentiated, right? Or in one more, question, one more question to answer your question. Okay. <laughs> What, what do you, in the last previous slide, I showed you the whole process how the human is being created, right? From the pluripotent, totipotent, the multipotent, unipotent. Uh, which cell stage for a human lifetime you can consider as an undifferentiated cells? The embryo? Yeah, yes, because embryo, before the embryo, basically, it is undifferentiated because the cell has no function, right? It has the, it is going to be now transformed, differentiated. So the single cell, when it is fertilized with, with, with uh, sperm, right? And ob yes. obulo, basically this is going to be undifferentiated cell because it's still, it is not differentiated, right? It is not, it does not have the, the main function of it, right? When it will become embryo, Embryo itself, it is a specialized cell. Man means embryo has one function, right? Embryo is a baby, basically. Now, right? Yeah, it's because my question was more directed. Like I understand that, like for example, we can take a cell from the plant, and with the chemicals and the correct treatment, it can become undifferentiated. But with us or with animal tissue, it's not like we can take a part of the skin, treat it, and become yes. undifferentiated. Oh, okay. yes, that was my question more directed. Okay. Thank you. So everything you take in human color, basically it's going to be already differentiated and you cannot make them undifferentiated, right? Thank you. Okay, yes, Emilia? So we can say that any totipotent cell is uh, undifferentiated or different, yes, undifferentiated. Totipotential cell, uh, uh, let me think. Uh, or no. <laughs> Or I just get confused. <laughs> no, 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 no. No, you, you are fine. You, 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 I think I'm getting your question. Uh, you are asking whether totipotential cell is differentiated and differentiated. Is, is it is it what you yes. are asking? Right? Okay. Yes. Uh, uh, look, totipotentiality and differentiation and differentiation are, are not totally, uh, uh, they are not same thing. Totipotential is a capacity. Okay. It's a capacity of a cell, right? Uh, getting my point? It's a capacity of a cell, whether the cell can be transformed in something. So this is the capacity. An undifferentiated cell or differentiated cell is a state of cell. This is el estado de la célula, okay? So differentiation means uh, uh, when you take a cell from a leaf, right, Emilia, you take a leaf, right? You cannot take a single cell from the leaf. First, you will cut the leaf. So leaf itself, it is already differentiated, right? So the cell you are taking, it is coming from a differentiated tissue, okay? But now this cell, you can multiply by chemicals, by the treatments, and it will duplicate, multiply, and, and, and give more cell and more cell and more cell. But if the cell is not converted in anything else, means it is undifferentiated. It remains un, 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 undifferentiated until unless it does not become any organ, okay? So the answer, yes, a single cell, 
it has it may have the capacity it may be totally potential or not because that is the capacity right mm -hmm. but but the the one single cell you can call it as a undifferentiated because basically still it is not converted or it is not a part of a functional organ okay okay i get it. yeah yes. thank you cool so moving further so so for example uh, just just uh, emilia just ask no so this is this picture is just because maybe the 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 for amelia for example i took a cell from the meristematic tissue and this cell which is not a part of now of any organ it does not have any function right now it is not part of our organ means it is an undifferentiated cell whether it has the potential capacity or not i don't know right we expect that it must have but it is undifferentiated right but when i different make it differentiated it will become a, a leaf it will become a transport cell it will become a root shoot whatever it is okay cool so now one second i'm going to okay i'm going to change the the style of this okay because i cannot annotate anything okay now i can do okay so okay can you see the slides okay yeah okay great so okay so so for example this is callus okay this is callus and this is how a one cell become like a tumor like a tumor because it's keep doubling and doubling and doubling and doubling and you can see that it has white color it has green color means some cells have more chloroplast some cells have less chloroplast right but this is how a callus look like and this callus has been generated from a tissue isn't it so any tissue it could be leaf it could be seed it could be any part of the plant right and you manipulate this by the same concentration of two main hormones auxin and cytokinins that is the uh, uh, standard protocol and you are able to create callus on it so now from a specialized differentiated cell you are creating something which is undifferentiated is that clear and from this undifferentiated material now you can put some other concentration of the hormones right and now this callus will give you roots okay you got some roots over here and then from this roots by another manipulation by another modification you are going to have root uh, shoots together when you cut this part it will become a one complete functional plant leaf okay so this is the process of callus formation callus induction and from callus culture you are creating plants which is become micro propagation right and uh, this you can call the 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 callus culture okay is that is that clear okay for example i have one more example here and uh, you can see a carrot right a carrot tissue culture so uh, since carrot has is, is a is uh, you can see it it has the complete different structure and uh, basically normally now some people can ask me why don't you take a leaf right or the part of the plant i can take it i can do tissue culture also right but this is just to give you some idea because a, 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 a carrot can be uh, cut into different pieces it is going to be sterilized washed by surface sterilization by chemical to killing all the bacteria and fungi and everything which is on the surface or inside then i will put these small pieces right inside the disc and i can induce the callus okay from 4 to 6 weeks okay so the the callus culture right the callus culture uh, can be done from this carrot you have a lot of cells over here and these callus can further give you the the roots and shoots okay and finally each of them you can transfer into the soil and which will give, which will give you delicious 
carrots. Okay, so this is like giving you one more example out there. Now, you can see in this picture, uh, nowadays the technology and the days when the research was started in the field of plant tissue culture, you can imagine that without autoclave, without Campana de Fluco Laminar, how people were performing ex experiments. Experiments where zero life is required except what you are culturing. You are only want the plant or the part of the tissue to survive, nothing else, everything should be dead within the flask except your plant, right? So, so the history is, is quite interesting and uh, everything is started from, from this thing. Have you seen these kind of uh, structure on wood, on trees, anywhere in, 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 in your garden, in, in any other places? I'm sure you have seen these, isn't it so? Have you seen these kind of structures? They are very common. Yeah, and what that's, are, yes, and, yeah. And this thing is, is, was a natural callus formation. Okay. This was a natural chemical formation because when a tree or when a plant is small, insects or caterpillars or, 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 or baquita, borreguito, right? Animals, they are going to bite or damage or create injuries in the tissue of the plant. And this guy, Henry Louis Duhamel, uh, he observed that the plant got injury. What happened? They, they create a mass of cell around the tissue, around the injury. And finally, this part totally covered uh, uh, and recovered and regenerated. And, 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 and the surface of the plant, which were damaged, is fully recovered and, and covered by the strong woody material that is the process how plant protect itself. So then this was the idea that he think that plant also have very similar, something like human, right? Or animals, when we have injury, bloods come out and then we got a clot, right? Blood clot. And finally, the, 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 the immune system help us and the biological process start of regenerating the cells and uh, 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 creating the tissue over the, over the injury. So he compared that plants, animal, basically they have main thing. So that was the idea where this man started thinking about and gave the theory that plants have something that can regenerate, okay? And further on, Bochting in 1878, you can see uh, this guy, he started just one thing. He said that why plant always grow from bottom to top, okay? Why they, they, their polarity, you know, that, that polarity, how they, they suck the water and they take the water uh, to the top of the plant house. So, so he was very much interested in understanding the, the gravitational force and trying to find out that how plant can, can, can absorb the nutrients and water from the soil and take to the top of the trees and trees which can... Uh, 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 can be up to 100 meter long, right? And, and later on, Gottlieb Haverland, a German botanist, and he is also considered as a father of tissue culture. Uh, he was the one who did the first experiment in the Trascendentia, Trascendentia plant cells, right? He, he isolated the cell and put in the artificial media, okay, artificial conditions. His experiment was a failure, but he was... Uh, uh, he was able to maintain cells, tissue alive for a few days and weeks. So this was the first experiment and he reported this research in his book, but he never thought that this small, simple, failed experiment is going to give a whole new height and create a new area, which is now called biotechnology. Right, plant biotechnology, because he thought that this experiment was a failure and he couldn't find out any importance just because he was able uh, to maintain these cells alive in artificial conditions because he could not divide these cells, but he could maintain them alive. So he published a book in, in 600 pages and in 600 pages, this is the only thing in German that he talk about the, the, the plant cells that were 
able to maintain alive and he did not mention anything about the capacity about its theory hypothesis result discussion nothing he didn't mention anything because he was not very much um, modest and he was not very much um, uh, he was not expecting much from this kind of experiment okay but after the many scientists who read this paragraph they started working on this kind of experiment and then how the tissue culture started okay so this part in german i i translated it and and so you can read it this was his words of Harvardland that he started talking about that that very basic things you know i have been able to maintain such cell living in a suitable nutrient medium for several weeks assimilations continued and considerable growth was possible okay but basically he could not maintain them maintain them more than few weeks so finally that is the only thing he put and after that from that many many people started working on uh, plant cells and they started exploring that oh my god the plant cell can be maintained they can be grow they can uh, uh, maintain alive in artificial condition out of soil so people started working on it and after so many different experiments people started working with organ culture they take out different plants part uh, is now in 1904 uh, they 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 started growing different kinds of uh, compositions of media or nutrients like sugar solutions they started developing it for the first time uh, this uh, the, the scientist simon he started for the first time using iaa uh, indole acetic acid this is the this is the most widely used phytohormones phytoregulators plant growth regulators that was uh, the biggest uh, achievement uh, and and then people understand that if you want to plant to 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 divide to differentiate to grow plant hormones are the most important thing so when he added the iaa for the first time and he could find out the cell division and then uh, they never look back and the research you know they keep start keep keep uh, they, they kept working on 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 the dividing experiments you know and finally they started working with callus and they started they were able to create different kinds of you know uh, plants part and in vitro techniques uh, in this part they also were starting growing different kind of new nutrient media find out because you know on that time uh, laminar airflow were not available um, uh, now nowadays we have very advanced laminar airflow hepa filter all that but on that time they didn't have these facilities right but anyways, so so after that, you know, there were so many different experiments were made. I'm not going to read all of them. Just very, very brief. I, I would like to mention some very important highlights. For example, uh, this one in 1941, for example, they used a coconut milk. Okay. They used coconut milk and which is called, uh, we call it undefined media. Because when people came to know that, that um, uh, they were stand, standardizing uh, different kind of conditions for different kind of plant species. They came to know that, okay, some nutrients work good in some plants, but other nutrients are required for different kinds of growing, uh, growing different kind of plant species. So basically, uh, they started using different kind of natural compounds, natural extract like orange juice, banana, banana juice, uh, milk, uh, or coconut milk. So the, the good thing that in Datura plant, you know, Datura is a it's a very very important medicinal plant species there are so many drugs which have been developed by datura it is also found in mexico it's a i will show you some picture it's like a bolita and it has a lot of espinas over here right lot, lots of spine it's it's very toxic it's very toxic so so for example they they started using coconut milk and we know that coconut milk has a lot of phytoregulators so they find out very good growth in, in datura plants and after that people try to investigate more about phytoregulators and they were using uh, art, natural phytoregulators or on that time but nowadays uh, due to the requirements of the research we have developed a dozen a dozen of uh, natural and and synthetic phytoregulators okay and then uh, after uh, up to 1940 there were so many experiments successful experiments advancements happened 
And in 1952, Pfizer, you know, Pfizer, you can imagine the, this company, maybe uh, this is the company which highest number of patent and number one pharmaceutical in the world. Uh, they were the first to launch the vaccine also, COVID-19, right? So anyways, uh, they got first US, US patent based on plant tissue culture techniques, based on uh, 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 natural compounds, which is called shikonin. Still, it is in the market. Still, uh, still, you can find out the chemicals in the market. And they were able to produce by callus culture, by putting the callus culture in suspension media. And they were produced uh, shikonin, which is a anxiety, anti-anxiety compound for drugs. And finally, they start selling it. And that, that was the uh, historical uh, application, the first most widely application of plant tissue culture. And nowadays, you can find hundreds and thousands of patents and hundreds of thousands of applications of plant tissue culture. Okay. Okay. So if you see the timeline, it is it is very very important to to see that uh, because everything is related. The agriculture part, right? Uh, in ten thousand BC, the grafting, vegetative propagation in Mexico, uh, we had uh, Teosintle, right? Uh, in many other countries, they were used to cultivate papa. Uh, potato, right? And and uh, and normal vegetative propagation was was in 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 the culture, and then from directly in 18th century the cell theory came. Okay, one cell, one theory, one enzyme, one gene. These kind of concepts were created, and in 192 Haverland, you remember the father of tissue culture. He he started experiments and Bosting, Rochinger, they made some more successful experiments. Then we had some extra. Uh, experiments from Cote, from Robbins, and then finally we got first plant hormone, which was IAA, indole acid, in 1928, 1926, and then many other experiments were made, uh, other efforts of organogenesis were made, <clears throat> and then in 1953, even the after the first patent was registered, and uh, the the haploid technique, which I will I will explain you later that how you can make plants haploid. And after that, in 1954, the, the suspension culture were developed, suspension culture, the liquid media, right? And after that, you have other different kinds of medias were developed and very famous media were developed, which is called MS media. Nowadays, uh, you will see a lot of companies using this, this formula that was developed by Skoog and Miller. There was a scientist which developed a composition of micro and macronutrient standardized that can be used for a wide variety of plants to cultivate in vitro. Okay. And in 1960, the, the first culture cooking and then haploid embryo production was done in 1966 from, uh, from an Indian scientist, Maheshwari. He cultivated the haploid plant. Okay. And the haploid plants revolutionize all the agriculture field. And after that, uh, other uh, in vitro selection using uh, like genetic modification were developed in 1982 the protoplast technique which is also a part of plant tissue culture were developed and now this can be considered as a transgenic plant development right because uh, uh, now we had the knowledge about agrobacterium mediated transformation right how the bacteria can help us to genetic genetically modify the, the different kind of plant species. And then the, the particle bombardment technique were developed, right? By this technique, you have a, a, a gun and you have the gold particles. You put a desired gene on it and attack to the tissue. And that tissue enters in the nucleus in the plant and you can have the genetic modifications, right? And the first, uh, the golden rice, first genetically modified crop, were developed in 2000 and it's still golden rice is not uh, it is prohibited in many part of the world and it is under uh, trials it still is under trials more than 20 years uh, have been uh, passed out but still it is under trials and now the most advanced things now we call it modern plant biotechnology where we have proteomics genomics lipidomics um, um, yeah, but, different kinds of omics, metabolomics, for example, different kinds of techniques have been developed. Uh, now in very recently, 2013, uh, uh, recently they got Nobel Prize for it, right? The CRISPR-Cas uh, gene editing techniques have been adopted. And now, a days in 2020, 12 to 2021, we have 
new integrated breeding platforms by using data science, artificial intelligence, machine learning, genomics, all that together by traditional breeding method, now helping by statistical analysis. Now we are improving the crops with a very well established platforms and with very advanced technology, right? And, and very much, much faster, much quicker than, than previous times, okay? So this is the, the total timelines of how the plant biotechnology have been evolved, okay? During the whole time period. Doubt question to here, guys? Or are you sleeping? <laughs> Too much information, right? Okay. Yeah, it's a lot of information, teacher. That timeline was really long. <laughs> yes. Okay. Okay. So now it's it's about the applications. Okay. Uh, applications. Uh, I'm going to you know just give you five minutes. Uh, uh, on the applications and the rest of this we will discuss in the next class yes sophia you have a question please go ahead yes um because it's a lot of information for the exam what will be an advice from you to because you're gonna ask us all the dates and all the the uh, uh, don't worry about the dates i never ask the dates Okay. Okay. Just like I, the process. I will ask you the technology that we are learning. Okay. No dates. Okay. okay. Thank okay. you. Don't worry about the dates. Don't worry about the names. But just remember the Howard name because he's the father of tissue culture. Rest of them you can forget. <laughs> okay. Just just Howard Just don't forget Howard because I'm sure it will come in the exam. Okay. Okay. He's he's a German German botanist. Okay. So so anyways. Uh, before I go further, uh, the, the information is uploaded on Canvas, right? It is, it is already on Canvas. Uh, the previous class is already recorded and uploaded in the Google Drive. Uh, I already uploaded some videos. I call them RLMN. I'm going to put it, it here. It's a uh, like acronym. Uh, it's like uh, extra reading learning material, ERLM. Okay, this is I used to put in the in the canvas. So don't get confused. Uh, you may ask, what is this ERLM? ERLM is extra reading learning material, which I already uploaded in canvas. Okay. So it has like four different videos, uh, one scientific article. Okay. Let me show you. So I just like to give it to you. So you, you decide whether you want to read it or not, because I already asked you to read several things, but I try to leave you some extra material always, okay? Because I know maybe you are interested in reading, knowing more about it, so you can have material. You don't have to search anywhere else, okay? Do you see my screen? So, so this is the first class. This is the second class, today's class. And, and this is the homework, which I will explain you. And this is the uh, ERLM, 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 ERLM. These are the four different videos and one scientific article, okay? All about the, the related with the this class, okay? So this is just to, to give you an idea about all the information you can have over there and just uh, entering again in the part of the application, okay? Okay, you see my screen, right? So uh, in, in, in case of ap application of tissue culture, you know, the, 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 we can divide these all application in four and five categories. Number one, and the most important one is propagation of plant, produce hundred thousands and millions of plants in a short period of time in a, in a very small space and with high quality material, right? So that is the one, one of the most important application of tissue culture. We call it micropropagation, right? If, don't get confused because micropropagation is whenever you do tissue culture to propagate a lot of plant that automatically become micropropagation, okay? Or clonal propagation because they are clones, right? So 
this is a link of a video. I already uploaded some video over here. So, so definitely you can go and, and find out some, 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 some videos, right? Here it is. And this is the video. So for example, uh, you can imagine that how Nescafe maintains the same fragrance aroma of its coffee all over the Mexico, right? how they maintain it, how the tequila from Jose Cuervo is the, uh, uh, Jose Cuervo, or yes, Jose Cuervo is the main, how they maintain the, the same fragrance of the, all the bottles, right? How the banana from a company maintains that all the bananas, uh, they have the same color, same taste, same size, right? Uh, how the, the, the uh, 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 timber tree, for example, how the trees or the, the, the uh, strawberry, for example, they are, they are being produced uh, of high quality throughout the year uh, without any problem of the diseases and fungi and taste and size, regardless of that, how they maintain. Uh, most of the, for example, uh, Nescafe, for example, in Mexico, Basically, it produces all the coffee by micropropagation. I, I don't know if you know it. Uh, there is a company in, in Chiapas, Tapachula, that produces uh, 10 millions of coffee plant for Nescafe. And they distribute these plant lays to the agronomist and they produce the coffee and they give the coffee to, to, to Nescafe. So they produce, they maintain the quality. Nowadays, I know that some company are also going to produce tobacco to maintain the same taste aroma fragrance of their cigarettes, okay? So, so micropropagation have been widely used, but still it is not completely exploited, okay? And it has a lot of potential it. Uh, very few companies uh, are in Mexico, only very, very few companies are working on it. But big, big company like Nescafe, Nestle, other companies, they are, they are utilizing this technology nowadays and they are accelerating the, the production by maintaining the high quality of the plants, okay? So this is the, the, the micropropagation application, for example. The other application is the production of disease-free plant. Several of you already mentioned this, but how you produce disease-free plant? Number one, whatever you grow in the lab, it is free of viruses and bacteria, okay? It is already free. Virus bacteria are not allowed in the in vitro conditions. So whatever you grow, it is free from it, but it goes to the ranch or goes to the, to the, to, to the, the, to the field, basically it may get contaminated, it may get infected, right? But there is a tissue in plants, which I already mentioned. This is the growing tissue, growing tip. And this growing tip called apical meristematic tissue. This apical meristematic tissue has wonderful characteristics. Number one, it does not have vascular system, okay? It does not have vascular system. So whatever running here in the veins of the, the, the tissue, whatever it is running, it's never going to enter into the meristematic tissue. So maybe you have pathogens inside the plant, but they will never enter in the apical meristematic tissue, number one. Number two, that this has high metabolic rate. This is the tissue which, which is growing fast with the fastest rate or, or um, than any other tissue in the plant. So this is has high metabolic rate. And when it has high metabolic rate, it creates some chemicals which is not known well, but, the, but uh, hypothesis says that they are phytohormones that inhibit viruses. Okay, that inhibit viruses. So non-vascular system and high metabolic rate make this explant most suitable to create disease-free plant or virus-free plant. Okay, so whenever you take this plant, this part to create plant slates, they are considered as virus-free. Okay, now you may ask me, okay, so virus can be infected or can enter. Yes, they can infect anytime, right? This is not a vaccinated plant, but whatever I'm producing, most of the time, virus remains inside that tissue and it grows with the plant. And whenever it finds favorable conditions, it multiply, replicate and infect the plant. Okay, so at least by tissue culture, we eliminate these possibilities and we got a certification 
from a molecular diagnosis lab and they can check that most of the, uh, uh, the plants are free from certain potential uh, threat or potential pathogens for this particular plant species. And after that certification, you can sell this plant as a certified plant, as a certified virus free plant. Okay, so these are the two application. Okay. Okay, so 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 these are the two. Rest of it, I'm going to explain in the next class. Okay, I think this is more than enough for today. And uh, the the homework. Just let me give you the homework. Okay. So. So before I go to the homework, any question, any doubt about the, the, this, this part of the introduction, this part of the history or little bit what we have seen about application? Do you have any, any doubt, question? Yes, 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 Maria. Uh, I have a question about if you know some applications of this culture tissue in, um, for example, dermocosmetics. I don't know if you know yes. about it. Yes, yes, why not? In suspension culture, we, I, I can find you some example even later on because we will have a session about suspension culture. And suspension culture is to produce secondary metabolites which have medical, food, and cosmetical applications. Okay, so there are so many, uh, nowadays, so many antioxidants, so many chemicals, biomolecules, anti uh, aging chemicals, anti aging biomolecules that have been produced by tissue culture systems. Definitely, I can, I can share with you in, in future some inf information about it. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Anything else, guys? No? All clear? Okay. So on Monday, we will have a, a test, okay? I will put one test on Canvas. And uh, for that test, you have to read book chapters, okay? So, so do you see my screen? Do you see my screen, right? Yes. These both book chapters, they are, they are small book chapters, but I want you to go through and read, okay? All the information about introduction. These are introductory, so they don't have any more technical terms. They don't have more than the history. They don't have anything about the, the background or, and, 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 uh, and basic application of the tissue culture. So it's a very simple literature. Uh, it is already uploaded in the module one, week one. So please read both of them. And uh, I, will, I, will, I, will, I will put one quiz, okay? And this quiz is going to be a graded quiz, okay? So it has value for your first partial, okay? So the, the first book chapter is a very small, like five pages. The second one, it, it, it has a little bit, uh, similar amount of the pages, but they are introductory, okay? It's like you just read it and try to grasp all the ideas. The second one, which is called the, the future ahead, it is, it is a book chapter that talk about the most advanced things and the most basic things, okay? So try to read it and any doubt, any question we can discuss before the quiz and then we will go with the quiz on Monday, okay? Teacher, sorry, can you repeat about the, the great because I had an unstable internet connection. Oh yeah, it is going to be response monitor. I will give you 10 or 15 minutes for the quiz. You can switch on, switch off your, your camera. You can answer the quiz and come back. Okay, I don't think that you will have problems with the internet, even you can reply in, in mobile phone, iPad, okay? Uh, okay, yeah, thank you. Okay, doubt questions? No? Okay. So see you on Monday. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good weekend, guys. Same, Ashur. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, Ashur. Thank you. Same, thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye, teacher. Thank you. Yes, Karina. Uh, yeah, I have a, I had problems with my mic, so I couldn't say um, uh, um, when, when you were taking lists. So I just wanted to know that I was here. I write you on the chat, but I, I don't think you saw it. Yes, I, I saw it and I change it. Generally, I don't change, but I change it. Don't worry, okay? Okay. I put your attendance. Okay, thank you. You're, you're welcome, Karina. I have a 
another question. Yes. Because I read, I, I wanted to participate, but my mic wasn't working. Mm -hmm. But um, I read about orchids, that or, orchids, or, um, orchidias, I don't know if I pronounce it correctly, uh -huh. but I read that with micro preparation, you can like, um, in Asia, they use it so they can um, make more orchids because yes. they have a really, really, um, like the climate for uh, the region of the orchids are really rare. So they do it in vitro. And, yes. and so you can do that in the lab. So you can just take like like flowers or the steam or something. Yes. And yes. do these calluses. Yes, sure. Look, uh, the we can we are going to see the orchid micropropagation and, and special cases of my micropropagation. So don't worry about it. You will you will see a lot of information. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. We will learn about it. Don't worry. <laughs>